in the concept of love, we live in a world that is confused about love. All around us, people are using the word love and they really don't comprehend the ultimate concept of what love is. You see, some people, and you might be an individual who feels this way, but some people, they began to, to think that love is a feeling. Now, let me say this. I need to say you're right. Love is a feeling. But it is not just a feeling because every one of us knows how wrong your feelings can be. Is that true? I mean, you may feel this, but it's not, you know, changing the reality of what's going on and what's happening. So you need to begin to realize that feelings can somehow not be truthful. And so that's why we've got to be care careful and basing our salvation upon feelings. Well, I feel saved today. Well, let me tell you something. There's some mornings you're going to get up and don't feel saved. And when that happens, how do you base that relationship of God being loved, touching your life and changing you? You've got to begin to realize that love is more than just a feeling. And people are confused with that concept. And also we need to realize people are confused about God's love for them. You may ask the question, as is often asked by individuals, does God really love me? I mean, you look back and you begin to say, look at all the things that I've done wrong. The sinful acts or the unkind acts that I've did or the unforgiveness that I uh, portray towards individuals. And you begin to wonder, does God really love me? Because look at me. I am a sinner. And we realize that. So how do you know? How do you know that God really loves you? How do you know when someone loves you to the extremes of the definition of love? Is it because of the words or is it because of their actions? Do they love you just by saying, I love you, or is it something that they do? And one of the reasons God sent his love or sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born was to show us what love looks like. Love looks like Jesus, God in flesh. And we began to see that. The reason we know God is love is not because he said it, but it is because of what he did in history. What God did in history. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2 says this, it establishes to us the need for us to realize what Christmas is all about. Isaiah 9, 2 says, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Now I want you just to think about Christmas. There is a great light that shone the very first Christmas. We call it the Christmas star. The star of Bethlehem. The star that led the wise men to baby Jesus. We understand all that. And so Isaiah, many years uh, ahead of time, he said this. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. So we began to see the concept of God's love, God's revealing love. And that's what love is. God, God's love is a revealing love. So I, I want to say this in the area of as we go through and begin today, that there is no doubt in my mind that God has proven his love towards us. God has proven his love. There are people who say there is no God. Well, let me say this. Hold your breath for an hour. You say, well, what does that mean? No, that don't change that there is a God. Well, if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have the air that we breathe. 
And so we begin to realize God's love is everywhere around us. It is not just at Christmas time that we preach and we proclaim that God is love, but it is a concept of what we are to begin to be practicing in our lives day in and day out. So God has proven his love. Now let me give you an understanding about love and the, and the area of the secular aspect. We begin to understand that uh, love is more than a word. Now let me give you the definition. This is, I want to give you two definitions. One would be the secular definition, a part of the secular definition. But I really want to, to, to focus upon the biblical definition of love. What is the biblical definition of love? What does that really imply and mean? And some of you are probably thinking in your mind, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Yes, you're right. But let me give you what it says this. The dictionary definition of love gives us a solid solution. It says this, it's an affection, a romance, and stability that comes from another person. Now that's the, the, what we would look at and we begin to find in, in the uh, dictionary and we find that as part of the definition. But the, di the deeper point, the biblical definition of love is sacrificial. That's what love is. It is sacrificing. Now think about the concept of the birth of Jesus Christ. We realize, and we're going to see in a moment when we go into, into the, uh, the, uh, the New Testament, we're going to see that, that Jesus Christ left heaven to come to earth. That is a sacrifice. I don't know any individual among us that would be willing to make such a sacrifice to, be, to empty ourselves of total what we have in glory, in the presence of God. Sometimes we watch the undercover boss on TV. You ever see that? You know what I'm talking about, where the boss, the one who has it all, he just kind of acts for a moment or two as if he has nothing, like he's just a regular, ordinary individual. Well, that's fantastic, but he's acting for just a short period of time and what we realize through Jesus Christ is he comes into the present and his love is something that is expressed for a long period of time let me say this the love of God has been expressed from the beginning of creation and will continue to be expressed throughout all eternity and we'll see that in just a moment. So the biblical definition of love is this. It is sacrificial, a love that gives first and expects nothing in return. It's biblical love that grants believers a peace that surpasses all understanding, which comes only from Christ Jesus. So love is more than a word. And we begin to understand. We also need to know, secondly, it is more than an emotion. I've already kind of alluded to this, but love is more than an emotion. Because there are times, you need to understand, there are times that your emotions change, but true love never changes. Do you know what I mean? You may not want to be around somebody because of something that just happened, but if you truly love that person, that love is not going to change. But emotions change. Your emotions, you can be ha having a great day and then all of a sudden, your emotion changes. Well, let me say this. If your emotion can change from positive to negative in just a second, why don't we take it back and change it from being negative to a positive within a second? Most people hold on to the, the bad emotions that come into their lives. I'm going to be angry the rest of the day. Somebody upset me this morning, so I'm going to be mad the rest of the day. Well, when we begin to look at the love of God, we see how that makes a, a difference in our lives. Emotions change, but true love will never change. Also, we need to understand that love is an interaction with others. That's all about Christmas. God says, and he looks at mankind and he says, mankind needs something they can't do for themselves. They need a savior. They need somebody to touch their lives and to change their lives in such a miraculous way. That's why we have the gift of God, Jesus Christ coming down to earth. Love must be shared. That is interaction. If you love somebody, you're going to interact with them. I mean, it's hard to, if we just threw out a name today, you say, well, who is that? I got to know who it is. You begin to understand the concept, but God has a love for all of his creation. 
from the very beginning to the very end, God will continue to love and try to reach people uh, to bring them into salvation. And let me say this in the area of this concept of understanding about love. Love can be one-sided. Do you know what I mean by that? You can love somebody, but it doesn't mean they're going to love you back. You think about, now let me, let me take some of you back years ago when you was in school, okay? You remember that first crush that you had? You just loved that person, and you just would do anything, you know, for that person, but that person didn't pay you the time of day, didn't care nothing about you. That's what I'm talking about. Love can be one-sided, and that's where we get into the concept of realizing that you can love somebody who doesn't love you. And we look at God's love. God loves all of us, but all people don't love God. They have that free choice. Hey, that's a part of God's love to give us the free choice to pick and to choose uh, if we will obey God or reject God. So God loves all, but all don't love God. So when you begin to look at this, you begin to realize that Christmas somehow come on the scenes and it begins to change our understanding of God. God is no longer the man upstairs. God is the man who came to earth and was born and lived among us and was tempted and tested and tried. And he went to the cross of Calvary to die for the sins of the world. What a wonderful Savior was born on Christmas Day. So let's begin to look at Christmas. It is the proof of his love. Christmas is the proof of his love. In John, if you will, open your Bibles to John chapter 4, verses uh, 7 through 11. It says this to us. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and he sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love God one another so we begin to understand according to the passages here in john uh first john we began to see first john chapter 4 verses 7 through 11 we understand verses 7 and 8 it is established to us point blank that god is love so under the proof of his love we know that god is love god loves his creation god has always loved his creation now, he doesn't like the sin in the lives of those that he has created. That's why he has provided us a Savior, Jesus Christ, to uh, come to earth and to um, provide for us. So first thing you need to jot down is proof is that God is love. God is love. That is his nature. Uh, he, he is a loving God. He is a kind God. If he was not a loving God and a kind God, none of us would be here today. So secondly... We understand, according to verse 9 and 10, that God reveals his love. So Christmas is a revelation to us of God's love. Well, how does that reveal his love? Two things that I want to say in regards to how it reveals his love. We find that there in, well, we might put it this way. The, the two things is that love, love, God's love came down to us. That is, Jesus, the Son of God, is present with God. And God said, we need some way to provide, and I am going to send you my Son to the earth to live amongst and to uh, reach out the people and try to change the hearts of individuals. But we, you are going to have to leave heaven and come to earth. Boy, that's, that's a strange task. But Jesus, the Son of God, willingly did this and he left heaven. So God reveals his love first in the fact that he came down. Jesus came down. Jesus loves you enough to leave heaven. Now let me ask you something. When you get to heaven, do you, 
Do you magic? Do you think you want to leave heaven? I don't want to leave heaven because listen, heaven is where a lot of my loved ones have already gone on to be with uh, God in glory. Heaven is is a place where there is no pain. Hallelujah, Amen. Right? No more pain. No more tears. No more suffering. No more hunger. And we began to see that here what the love is, 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 is God's son, Jesus. He says, I love them enough that I will go for you, Father. And I will fulfill what you have in store for me. Now, people, you need to understand, before the son came down, he knew what was going to happen to him. God is all-knowing. I understand that. I have no problem with that. We was listening to uh, how people, you know, are, are frightened the fact that God knows everything. And those people who are afraid that God knows everything are people who are doing something they ought not be doing. Amen? You see, if you're doing what you ought to be doing, you're not afraid that God knows what you're doing. Because you're not doing anything wrong. And so we began to realize that he, Jesus, came down. But not only the fact, and, and, and we find that in verse 9. Let me read that to you. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. That's coming down. God sent him. And we look at it and we began to realize and we began to all in the fact that God loves us enough that Jesus Christ came down. The son of God came down and became Jesus in our midst. And then in verse 10, we find out it says here in his love. Now, this is the second part that God reveals his love is the fact that he died. He died for you. He died for mankind. Jesus didn't stay a baby. You can't talk about the birth of Jesus Christ and have a savior without the death of Jesus Christ. And so when we began to realize that he died for us, listen to what verse 10 says. Here in his love, not that we loved him, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Is there anybody in here today who is not a sinner? We all have sinned. We all commit sin. And it is Jesus Christ who was sent and came, volunteered to come and to be born in order to be the propitiation for our sins. And that happens when he goes to the cross of Calvary. So God reveals his love. Not only that, we know that uh, back in, in, in Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, you begin to see that uh, there was a name that Jesus was going to be referred to or known as. And that name is, his name is Emmanuel. You understand that. You can look at it. You can begin to see. Anybody know what Emmanuel means? God with us. God with us. God, not up there, here with us. And one of the great things about Jesus Christ is that he promised, he says, when I go away from you, I will send the Holy Spirit. Guess where the Holy Spirit can be? With us, in us. And we began to see that wonderful truth. So his name is Emmanuel there in Matthew. God with us. And we realize that. Also, we need to realize that over in Luke's gospel, we begin to understand that there is an announcement made to the, to the shepherds out there in the field who were keeping watch over their sheep that night. And they began to listen to what was being proclaimed in regards to uh, this new birth. And the angels revealed it is a gift. Number four, it's a gift of his salvation. That's what the angel said. The angel said, for unto you, unto who? Unto you, shepherds, unto you who will accept it, unto you who will trust and believe in Jesus Christ. It says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior. Why well, didn't you say uh, unto you is born this day in the city of, of David, just a baby. But it refers to the fact that this child, this baby was going to grow and to mature and to choose to be the savior of all mankind. 
So the angel said that uh, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Jesus Christ, God incarnate in flesh. His gift of salvation to us as individuals. Jesus came, was born of a virgin in order to die for sinful people like you and I. Well, that's God's love. God loves us. But I said that basically you can love somebody and that doesn't mean they're going to love you back. So let me ask, how do we prove? What is the proof of your love towards God? How can you begin to say, well, I, I know I'm loving God. These are some of the things that are in my life. And, and it is a proof positive that I love God. And, and I've already said that love needs to be something in the area where we're interacting with individuals. We must interact with God. If you're not interacting with God, chances are you have no relationship with God. There has to be interaction in order for you to ultimately love. So let me give you some of the things, the proof of your love towards God. All of life, a life that is uh, having a, a love towards God is a life that is fully surrendered. Now, I'm saying that not in the sense of you just say, oh, I lost the battle, I give up, I'm a prisoner now. No, that's not what I'm talking about surrendering. I'm talking about you have a fleshly nature. Listen, Jesus had a fleshly nature. Jesus was tempted and tested in the flesh, but yet he sinned not. So what I am talking about is a surrenderance, not a giving up, but a giving over. Lord, my flesh wants to do this, but I surrender it to you. I make the sacrifice that is needed to make to where I can stay focused and true to you. Isn't that what Jesus prayed in the garden just before the crucifixion? Father, not my will, but thine be done. That's what I'm talking about. In this concept, in order to prove your love towards God, there has to be a surrenderance of yourself. Lord, I surrender all. Lord, I give it all. Lord, I am a sinner and, and I give myself to you. And not only is it an area of surrendering, but it is a 100% full commitment to Christ. When we begin to talk about a commitment, it is an I want to attitude, not a have to. This A commitment is I will do anything because of the love that God has for me. I want to show the love back to him. It is a commitment. It is a, a out and out uh, where I want to do this in order to honor God. People want to honor themselves in our culture today. But the child of God, the proof is their area of commitment. Evaluate your actions and find out what you are committed to. And it will begin to reveal whether or not God is the one that you love. We can go into the next aspect. We got surrendered and commitment and Thirdly is the area of being loyal or loyal to him. That is faithful to the end. We live in a world of broken relationships where we love people for a period of time. We see it all amongst us in, 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 in our society today in the area of marriage. And we have this concept of going on in regards to, well, I love that person. And then all of a sudden they use the expression that is, I fell out of love. Well, I want to tell you something. I thank God he never falls out of love with us. You see, God continues to, that's loyalty. That is, no matter what, I will stay true to him. And that's all it's, uh, it's about. Your genuine love for him, surrendered to him, committed to him, loyal to him. And then the fourth one is the area of outreaching. Now, in, in the context of what we read, our text in 1 John chapter 4, it said this from the beginning, Beloved, let us love one another. That's the beginning there of verse 7. Verse 11, 
And if you read through this, you're going to see like double emphasis throughout. So here in, in verse 7, beloved, let us love one another. You are to love one another. And verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. So what we began to see is the proof of your love towards God is you are a person that is reaching out to others. You are taking the love that God pours into you, into your life, and you are a living example of the love of God to others. It is outreaching. It is presenting the gospel, uh, doing good deeds, doing things in order to uh, let people know that your life has been changed. Loving others. It's not that hard, is it? But we sometimes think it's that hard. Outreaching. Loving others. Does God love us? That's what Christmas is all about. The love of God coming down. Outreaching. God's love is outreaching. Everyone hasn't experienced the birth of Jesus Christ. But everyone can experience the true love that God offers to them. His love... God's love is a gift. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Wrapped. A present. God's gift is a present to all of us. And his gift is the, and it has the ability to change your life in such a way that you never could have imagined without God's love towards mankind there would be no Christmas John 3 16 and 17 says this for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Love is from God to us to be given to others. Do you love God? First, surrender yourself to God. Secondly, love others as he loved you. Because ultimately, we need to know that He, God, is love. He loves you. Amen? He loves you. He loves you. You say, well, I don't love Him. I don't even believe in Him. That doesn't matter. He loves you. Or you wouldn't be here. God's gift to you is life. And God's gift to you is the freedom to choose to accept or reject Him. That's love. He could force us, but He doesn't. He allows us to make bad choices. And He offers us forgiveness. He loves you. Pray with me.